Hey and welcome back to another tutorial now under the IndieTips.com branding. Today we're going to have an in-depth look into lenses. What lenses should you have in your kit, what do they do and what brands to invest in depending on your budget. So it's going to be a long one so go grab a cup of coffee and if it is that time of the night slip some whiskey into that cup of joe. First of all, what do you need in your kit? Now professionals have a wide range of lenses. They may have six lenses just covering the range from 20 millimeter to 50 millimeter. I've recently left the world of DSLRs and I now have a RED and when checking out the RED user forum for some suggested lenses for the camera, the lists that I was suggested were huge. A standard kit was around 10 lenses, which is completely insane. The most I've ever used is only four. So we're indie filmmakers, DIY filmmakers, guerrilla filmmakers, and we don't have that much money. So we're going to have three lenses in our kit. A wide lens, a standard lens, and a telephoto lens. The focal length we're going to be looking at for each of these lenses are the wide 24mm, the standard 50mm, and the telephoto at 70 to 200mm. Now with the wide, I would suggest the 11 to 16mm Tokina lens if you are shooting on a crop sensor camera because this is the lens for you. But if you're shooting on the 5D or a fill frame camera, this lens will not cover the entire sensor. This is a shot from a music video I done two years ago for Welsh artist Jonathan Powell. And if this shot was on the 5D, the picture would look like this. Not very appealing. A wide angle lens, as you guessed it, captures a wider field of view than normal and telephoto lenses. They also distort distances along the z-axis, this, making them appear longer than they actually are. So this would be really good if you're getting an establishing shot in the mountains or the desert and you can have a nice panoramic pan like a Sergio Leone Western. Wide angle lenses produce a deeper depth of field than the standard or telephoto lens and this is extremely useful if you're doing handheld scene. Say in a street as you can set the lens to f4, stick the focus wheel to infinity focus and follow the talent without having to worry about focus where if this was a 50 millimeter, you'd still need your focus pulling fingers. Because of this, wide angle lenses aren't used that much for close-up shots because it gives the talent's face a distorted feel, but if that is your intention, then perfect, use its lens. The standard lens produces an image quite like images we see from our eyes. So this lens is great for conversational scenes and any scenes that focuses on a human subject. And with this lens, you can go and get up close as it doesn't distort the view. And with standard lenses, as the field of view is closer, you will also obtain a nice shallow depth of field. Telephoto lens. Now these lenses have a narrower field of view than the previous two lenses. They also compress the space along the c-axis of the frame so the background appears closer to the foreground and like the wide angle this also distorts the c-axis too. And the telephoto makes movement along that axis to be very fast. Because of the compressed feel the telephoto lens has shooting a close-up on a human subject can make them look very flat however the shallow depth of field you can get with a telephoto lens can be very very shallow which is amazing for when you want to focus on a small area of an already close-up object and here's a great tip that will give you an interesting shot for long shots it's usual to use a wide lens but if you use a telephoto it compresses the background and gives you a really unique perspective so what brand to invest in ideally you want a fast prime lens. What is the first prime lens? Well the aperture, represented by this little thing, controls the amount of light that will hit the sensor or film. An aperture is measured in f-stops, which is light divided by the diameter of the aperture, and the widest it will open will be its classification for either being fast or slow. If it opens really wide, like down to 1.2, 1.8, it will be classed as fast. Lenses that can only hit 3.3 and 5.6 and higher are classed as slow. And they are called fast and slow lenses because a fast lens requires less light to register an image, whereas a slow aperture may require more light. Now, of course, fast lenses are gonna cost more, but for filming on the DSLR, they are essential. Otherwise, you will have to have a lot of lights for when it gets dark, or be forced to increase the ISO, and that will give you digital noise, which is never good. And a prime lens? A prime lens is a lens that has a fixed focal length, so a 50mm is only going to stay at 50mm, you won't be able to zoom. These are more preferred as a prime lens focuses on image quality rather than the convenience that a zoom lens would supply. And also as the prime lens has less elements than a zoom lens, it will also be much lighter, which is also good for when you're out in the middle of nowhere. So let's have a look at what lenses to buy. I'm going to first suggest lenses based on a moderate budget. These are the lenses you'd want to be working up to if you're starting off from entry lenses. 
And these are the 50mm 1.4 by Sigma, $500. The 24mm Macro 1.8 by Sigma, $500. And the 70 to 200mm Macro 2.8 by Sigma $900. All Sigma lenses, very well built. I've bloody dropped mine a good few times and they're still working perfectly. They all have 70 millimeter threading so you can go and buy an ND filter for one size. And I love the focus on the 50, uh, the telephoto where you can manual focus even if you are set into autofocus. So there will be no clicking and clunking. And if you're new to the HDSI game, you might wanna look at the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 very good image quality, very low price, and it has the cool nickname of a Nifty 50, the 28mm 2.8, and the 70 to 200mm F4. I'm sure you could get all these for under a thousand dollars from eBay. Now, I won't go into cinema lenses, as I'm sure if you're interested in buying a cinema lens, you would not be watching this video. But let's just say they cost a lot of money. So I hope you have a clear image about what lens to buy and how they work. This has been a IndieTips.com tutorial, daily bite-sized notebook-friendly indie filmmaking tips. See you soon.